Good Monday morning, ladies and gentlemen, and happy new year to each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. It is January 1st, 2024. I'm going to be making a very brief update video today. I have a lot of plans with the family once again this afternoon and later this evening, but I wanted to come in here and start with these routine updates once more, not only to start the new year off on a positive note, but also because we have some very big weather players getting ready to move onto the game board called the United States here within the next couple of days. Please like and share this video and subscribe if you haven't done so already and click those notifications to make sure you are getting updates as we unveil these new segments as they come out over the week and the next two to three weeks for that matter because we have a lot to talk about going forward. All right, guys, let's get started. So currently we're looping through our Zero Z European ensembles and guys, I'm gonna let you know right now if there is a little bit of stuttering or I might jump over some words here, I'm gonna try to make this as raw of a video as possible just for the sake of saving time. No fancy edits, we're just gonna get right into the weather material so please stick with me and bear with me because I've had a little bit of caffeine to start the day, okay? But we are looking at our Zero Z European ensembles and as you can see, as this loop goes through, we are expecting not one, not two, but multiple almost approaching a half dozen low pressure systems that are likely to move across the lower 48 particularly moving in somewhere along the west coastline of California some as far south as the San Diego California coastline work their way through the southern tier United States before moving up towards the Great Lakes the Midwest possibly the northeast United States as our next BAMO cyclone nor'easter. I'll pause the loop very briefly, and as you can see, especially as we get into January 9th and then the 10th and into the 11th, we're looking at a massive circulation possibly parked right over top the Midwest and the lower Great Lakes region, which is really going to intensify what blizzard winter storm conditions, freezing precip conditions for that matter, I do believe we will experience with this particular cyclone, as well as amp up the severe weather threat down here in the southeast, which we really haven't dealt with over the last couple of weeks. It's been very quiet out there. I'll take you briefly through the GFS ensembles today, and you can see there's our first system very weak through the Gulf of Mexico over the state of Florida. Here comes our next system, and then a couple other low-pressure cyclones after that until we finally see that same system form up. And intensity and location seems to ebb and flow very well with our European model. So guys, goes without saying, confidence and consistency are growing amongst all of our models, so I think we better start keeping our eyes close on when this system starts to develop and start making our preparations for potential blizzard freezing conditions across much of the northern interior United States and possibly looking at the threat for some widespread severe thunderstorm action down here in the south. I'm going to show you exactly why I do think if not the second but the third storm for sure is going to give us the potential for severe weather across the eastern half of the lower 48 predominantly in the way of winter storm conditions for the northern half and then severe thunderstorm conditions for the south. On the left hand side we have our 300 millibar jet level and on the right hand side we're looking at our good old vorticity very traditional for what we're looking at this time of year forecasting these non-convective baroclinic system threats. As you take this through time you can see our jet is very robust very aggressive across the southern United States particularly our El Nino jet is still moving across Mexico the Gulf of Mexico and then the Florida Peninsula before exiting into the Western Atlantic and you can see the freight train of lows very evident on our 500 millibar vorticity I'll go ahead and mark them we have one then we have two and then you can see the third getting ready to make its way onto the western coastline with a couple of weak perturbations moving through the Canadian provinces very similar to what we'd see with our Alberta clipper style systems many of these weak low pressure systems that are moving through the pattern as we speak approaching the western coast line moving through the southern tier are what I think is priming the atmosphere for that big event that we're expecting the middle of the second week of January. I'll quickly take this loop through and you can see there's our first negatively tilted trough kind of maintaining a neutral stature until it gets closer to the eastern coastline of the U.S. That's when we begin to see it take on a bit of a more negative tilt. Very subtle at best but we are expecting good cyclogenesis with this feature down in the low levels with very good 500 millibar vorticity with it. And then if you look out over the west coast even right now you can see a very strong jet max of the polar front moving in through the pack northwest California and then spreading further off to the southeast to the southern four corner states of Arizona and New Mexico. This system I definitely believe as you can see that very amplified jet activity moving through the deep south becoming very negatively tilted with a very very discernible low pressure low height center identified in the cold sector of that jet. This is the one guys I think this is going to welcome winter full force for the entire country. We're going to see widespread severe weather activity not only up to the 
north in the form of winter precip, winter activity, but then down over the south because we have such a strong pull of cold air coming from the south, naturally we're going to see an acceleration in our warm air advection on the leading edge of this system, which is going to increase our overall buoyancy and instability that's crucial for getting those very strong thunderstorms down here in the southern plains in the southeast quadrant of the country. This here is going to be our dynamic tropopause theta E, and this is just to give you guys a quick representation of just how much cold air is coming down. If you look, this is our cold pocket, that low height center I identified of 500 millibars. And you can see as it scrapes through the south and takes on that negative orientation, really driving a lot of those warm theta values as I briefly touched on on the last panel. Here's going to be our 0Z European model, and I hate to go fast through this, but you can see there goes our first low pressure system. Not a whole lot of instability or dynamics associated with this. We're mainly just going to have some energy moving through the pattern along both of our jet axes over the south. That's going to help to up our rain chances. We might see some very localized instances of some water collecting in the lower lying areas of your local area. Nothing in terms of severe flooding or severe weather associated with this. We're still going to be under a modified polar air mass, so we're not going to have that amplification of our thunderstorms if there are any. And we could maybe see some snow flurries over the higher terrain features of Mississippi, Alabama, moving into Georgia, and especially the Carolinas as the system moves off to the east-northeast because of how much cold air we might still have in what's called our atmospheric profile or the temperature profile from ground level all the way up. If we go shortly thereafter, you can see our next system already undergoing development over the Texas-Oklahoma panhandle with quite a bit of snowfall over the four corners, maybe a little bit of freezing precip action for the Texas panhandle, parts of interior Oklahoma, and then lots of shower and thunderstorm activity already brewing up. And as we take this further in time, the Euro is thinking it's really going to tap into its warm conveyor coming out of the Caribbean and the Gulf and bring up the chances that we could see some marginal severe activity. And if I had to give you a preliminary forecast for this particular low, I do think this is the one where we could see our isolated convective activity go up. We may see a marginal risk for severe weather highlighted with this. It really is going to depend on how deep it does get as it's scraping through the Gulf Coast and approaching the state of Florida and the rest of the southeast. And then finally moving right along, here comes our big whopper of a system already down to 989. And the models have been trending towards a deeper system. They have not backed off on this. The timing is phenomenal. The arrival is phenomenal. The initial development of this system has been phenomenal in terms of our run-to-run -run verification, not only on specific models of your choice, but between different models. We're all in sync here, so confidence is definitely growing, and the models think that we could have a much more intensified system on our hands as it does form up as we roll into the early morning hours of January 9th. And the reason I think whether or not we see severe weather or any thunderstorm activity with those first two systems remains to be seen. This is the one that's definitely going to provide us with all sorts of scattered severe coverage because look at the pressure gradient around this system. And if you think about it in terms of our temperature and the air that this system is drawing in with such a deep low, the air around it is going to be pulled into its center. So if you imagine we have our cold air up to the north surging down to get pulled in to the cold side or the back side of this low and all that warm modified tropical air down to the south of it over the Caribbean Sea, the Greater Antilles, even parts of the Gulf of Mexico is rapidly going to surge to the north creating a nice area, a nice region of unstable air available for this system to tap into as it transitions up to the east northeast. Definitely bombing out near the Midwest and the Great Lakes where you guys are most certainly going to see potential blizzard conditions with this and widespread blizzard conditions from the northern plains, the upper lower Great Lakes, through the Midwestern states, the Appalachians, and further to the north because this system is not done strengthening and we'll look at that as we move forward in time. This is also what has me very concerned with that third system. You can see a very weak low level jet forming up with our first system January 3rd and 4th. Again, we're really not going to be tapping into any available buoyancy for our thunderstorms to kick off, mainly just a rainmaker to hopefully alleviate the drought conditions that have been persistent through the Gulf Coast states. Our secondary system could give us a shot at some severe weather. As you can see, a very aggressive low-level jet forming up, tapping into the dynamics well into the Caribbean Sea, Central America, parts of the Yucatan Peninsula, where we do still have some modified equatorial warm, moist air down there to feed into the temperature discontinuity right along this gradient where you can see our converging wind flow down at the 850 millibar level. So we could see a marginal risk for some embedded thunderstorms and maybe some severe and very localized instances. We'll wait and see exactly what our low-level dynamics and what our high-res models have to say about this. But then finally, last but not least, this next big system is going to have a tremendous low-level jet associated with it. And guys, a low-level jet, for all intents and purposes, whenever you hear that mentioned on this channel or your weather source of choice, just means an extreme amount of warm air advection, instability working its way up from the south, and lots of good shear for these thunderstorms to tap into. And you can see that this is probably 
probably the most robust low-level jet we've had with a system so far with winds within this column of rushing air all the way up to 85 to 90 knots. So the key takeaway here is not necessarily the speed of the winds, it's just how much instability and warm air we're going to be pumping up from the equator to help tap into all the cold air that's coming out of the Canadian provinces, the plains and the Rockies that's going to interact and collide with it. And last but not least, one other key feature I wanted to highlight with this because we do have such strong winds very close to ground level and a lot of rain and snowfall associated with it, we're going to have a lot of momentum transfer or mixing of these wind layers above the ground down to the surface where we can feel them. So you can see preliminary gusts from the Euro at 0Z are thinking we could see 50 to 60 knot gusts down here at ground level where we can realize at least 70 to 80 percent of those strong winds at 850, 700 and further up into the atmosphere. So this is going to be a big event. And if I go to the very tail end of the loop, this is exactly why I do anticipate we're going to have blizzard conditions and winter storm conditions issued for a multi-regional aspect of the upper United States because you can see 40 knot gusts all the way through the Great Lakes into the Northern Plains, the Midwest, and then further into the Northeast. So this is going to be the big one, guys. You want to mark your calendars and start preparing now. And we'll get a little more into the threats as we get closer in time, but this is definitely on my radar and we're going to be talking about it very substantially as we go over over the next week. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. We're going to wrap up the video right now. I hope you like what you saw, and I hope you had a wonderful New Year's holiday. It's kind of sad that the holiday season has come and gone as quick as it has, but it looks like 2024 is shaping up to be very active, and Mother Nature has already given us a taste of what the entire calendar year could look like, and we'll definitely get into what the tropical season is anticipated to behave as we get closer in time and we get more climo data, and we'll closely scrutinize exactly what our Enzo oscillation is doing in the Pacific, because that's going to be incredibly telling for what June through November of this year is going to look like for us. Thank you all very much. We'll see you next time. This is Weather Center Nazario signing out.